But today I would like to go ahead and uh, let's look at our text this morning in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. And this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. The Sermon on the Mount is chapter 5, chapter 6, and chapter 7. And Jesus Christ is wanting to establish a spiritual kingdom. But the world during his time was thinking of a physical kingdom. But Jesus Christ is more interested with establishing a spiritual kingdom because there's no use having a physical kingdom if the hearts of people are away from the Lord. That's why he said in chapter 7 verse 21, he, w- he would like to uh, check the hearts of the people that are following him. He said there in verse 21, Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. So he would like to make sure that people who would join this spiritual kingdom understood that they cannot until they know that they are saved. Are you saved this morning? That's why he started off in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit. For you you to be able to come in in the spiritual kingdom, you you must come face to face with God and say that I am nothing. I cannot save myself. I must be poor in the sense I must, my attitude, I should have a, a kind of a spiritual bankruptcy which says there's nothing I have that I can show to God. All I have is nothing. I need the Lord Jesus Christ. But if you're saved today, then we are in that kingdom. And in chapter 5 to chapter 7, he will tell us how to do this. And now in chapter 6, looking at that word here, verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. So before he even say, seek ye first, there's a word, but. We all worry with many things. Amen? We worry about our makeup. We worry about uh, what's gonna, what, what, chick, what kind of rice do we going to eat this, this lunch. There are many things that we worry about. We worry about our future. We worry about our investments. We worry about many things. But for us to fulfill the work of the Lord, we must continue to seek God in Our life. We must have that attitude of a daily coming to God and thinking about the things of God. Now, how do I know that? How can I physically know that in my life? Now, in chapter 1 to 34, God will show us that. And I would like to go through this quickly from verse 1 to 18. Let's uh, let's go ahead and look at that. Now, I don't have time to read verse 1 to 18, but I would like to read some portions of it. Verse 1, it says, Take heed that ye do not your alms before men to be seen of them, otherwise ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, look at verse 2, When thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues, and in the streets, that they may have glory of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now jump with me to verse 5. And when thou prayest, thou shalt be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. Now Again, jump with me to verse uh, 16. It says here, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. So what is the Lord trying to tell us here? You need to seek Him with all of your heart, And in this context here, verse 1 to 18, he's talking about the Pharisees. The Pharisees were were trying to do some things, good things, giving alms. Giving alms basically is not the giving in the church. This is talking about helping people outside. When you see a beggar or when you see someone in need, and, and, and your heart should have that unction to help. 
And he mentions here that your right hand should not know what your left hand is doing. Well, you always know what your right hand in left hand is doing. It is just an expression that says that when you do something, it should be spontaneous. You don't even think about it because it's from your heart. It's a lifestyle. Now, he mentions prayer. When thou prayest, and then he mentions fasting. Do we fast? Now, when you look at giving to the poor, prayer, and fasting, those are all spiritual disciplines of Christians. We should, it, is, it is expected that we should do those things, because look at that word, when. The word when, he did not say if, he says when. It is expected that every Christian should have a heart for the poor. Amen. Number two, it's expected that all of us should be prayerful. Amen. Can I say amen? Are you here? Good morning. All right. I, I'm just trying to make myself comfortable with you guys. Okay. Now, number three, uh, fasting. Now, I don't know fasting. That's a hard thing to do for Baptists because we are known to be, you know, always eating. But it's still part of spiritual disciplines. But the problem here is this. The Pharisees are using these good things to draw attention to themselves. They are not seeking God. They are seeking something for themselves. So what's the first thing here? Seek God first in your motives or your fulfillment. What, are you, what is your fulfillment in life? For the Pharisees, their fulfillment is that when they go out in the streets, people will see them and they're praying, Wow! Amazing! When they're fasting, they don't, you know, comb their hair, they don't wash their face, so that people will say, Ah! Ni ula ah! Ni dumien si hun buhawa! You know, they, they, they started to look at them, and why, are you, why do you look miserable? Well, I've been fasting for three days and three nights. It's all for a show. My question today is, why are you here this morning? Why are you here? And to be honest with you, every day we need to ask that question, why am I doing what am I doing? Even the things that we do for the Lord. Why I am coming to church? Why I am teaching a Sunday school? Why I am singing in the choir. Why I am leading a song. Because for us to say to seek God first, we seek Him even in our motives. Meaning to say you check your motive. It's your motive. You want to do something because of God or because of yourself. Because when we do that, we don't just fulfill what God would want us to do. We fulfill the very existence that's why we are here. We are here for God's glory. We are here for the sake of His name. Do you know why we're going to China and to other places and tell people about Jesus? Not just because they're going to hell, because we are already going to hell. But people in the world need to come to that understanding that there's a God of heaven and earth. He is King. And we must all bow down to Him and worship Him because He is the one, the reason why we exist. So seek God first, number one, in your fulfillment. What fulfills your life? Is it God or the things of this world? Are you, are you a mission? Even me, I ask myself, why do I like to become a missionary? Is it because of that people in heritage will say, wow, he is a missionary. Or I'm doing this because God wants me to do this and I would like to glorify him in my life. Because to be honest, it's, there's pressure. When you are in China, it's not easy to share the word of God. Like maybe in Singapore and in the Philippines. In the Philippines, in five minutes, I can share the Lord Jesus Christ and people are praying and asking Jesus to be their Savior. In China, you spend one month, three months, five months, a year, and still they would question, mm, I'll think about it. But we all go through Genesis to, and, and the life of Adam and Eve and Noah and we go to the, the nation of Israel, why the nation of Israel is there. And we go to the life of Jesus Christ because remember these people, they don't have a background of God. And then I look at in Cambodia and my friends are there 
and thousands of people are getting saved. And you know what? I'm tempted to take a picture and let the Chinese people raise up their hand and say, hey, there are people getting saved here. But you know what? It's not for a show. We're here to fulfill what God would want us to do. If God give us a big crowd, praise the Lord. But it's not about the crowd. Am I fulfilling what God has called me to do? Number one, seek God first in your fulfillment, or I can say in your motive. What is your motive? I hope and pray that your motive in coming and doing something is for the Lord, not for your father, not for your mom, not for even the pastor. It's for the Lord. Secondly, let's go to verse 19 and 21. Look at verse 19 and 21. Lay not up for yourselves treasures upon earth where moth and rust that corrupt, where thieves break through and steal, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust that corrupt and where thieves do not break through nor steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. So how do you know? You're seeking him. You seek God first in your fulfillment or your motives. Number two, you seek God first in your finances or your money. And money is always a sensitive thing, right? And many a pastor and many a minister, we, are, we, we have that pressure, should I teach this? Man, that member will go away. But you know what? Jesus Christ speaks more of money than heaven or hell. Do you know why? He knew the influence. He knew the power of money. Why are many Filipinos are here in Singapore? Because of money. Why are you in Singapore? Because of, I mean, all of us exist for that. To, if you are honest with me, we go to school for what reason? For money. We go abroad for what? For money. And money is not evil. Look at what he said. He says here, look at the text. It says, uh, lay not up for yourselves. That's the problem. When you seek, when you, when you make money and you accumulate money and you save money for yourself, that's the, that's the biggest problem that we have today. You're not supposed to accumulate money. You're not supposed to make money thinking only for yourself. Remember the rich fool? Ah, I have a big barn. I need to make, but it's not enough anymore. I need to make bigger ones. Then God said, thou fool. Tonight, you'll die. And that's true. When all is said and done, when we die, all your money in your bank account, your children will fight over them. That's why Jackie Chan, Mark Zuckerberg, Warren Buffet decided not to give or leave a large amount of money to with their children. They need to work hard for it. But what's the point of the Lord Jesus Christ here? Here he's saying, is, in your finances, in your money, we seek God first. Now looking at your announcement a while ago, I believe all of you are here, are trying your best to make God number one in your finances. That's why we have the fights. That's why we have missions giving. All of these are helping us not to become stingy and become covetous, but helping us to become like the Lord Jesus Christ. What's that? Generous, seeking God. That our money is not the God that we have, but it is God himself. So number two, seek God first in your finances. Seek God first in your finances. Amen. Okay. We have 15 minutes more. Number three. I have a lot of things to say here, but let me just make it. And I believe you know you've been talking about, this is all about stewardship. All the things that we have is God's. We are just channels of blessing. The only thing is, what kind of blessing would you want to be? There is a tiktare, and then they give you a straw, Right? A straw is a channel. But there's also a tunnel like PIE or, or the underpass here in, in Singapore. It's amazing. It's so big. That's also a channel. What kind of channel would you like to become? Just for milk tea? 
or for a tunnel like that. God is looking for men and women in Singapore that he can use to become a channel of blessing. It's up to you. Will you seek him first in your finances? Thirdly, that we find verse 22 and 23. The light of the body is the eye. If therefore thine eye be single, the word single here means clear. It's not saying that you have a single eye. He's talking about your eye has no cataract. It's clear. You are generous. Thy whole body shall be full of light. Verse 23. But if thine eye be evil, selfish, thy whole body shall be full of darkness. If therefore the light that is in thee be darkness, how great is that darkness. Actually, this is related with the previous text. If your focus is this world, you cannot enjoy the spiritual blessing of investing in the work of God. You will not be happy about spiritual things if your focus is only in this life. If your eye is evil, focus on yourself, you will miss the spiritual blessing of investing in the work of the Lord. So what is this? Seek God first in your focus. What is your focus in life? What are you trying, what is your dream in life? What are you passionate about? And if there's something that we should be passionate, if there's something that we could focus on, that is the spiritual things of God. The kingdom of God in his righteousness. Look at verse, uh, Luke chapter 16, verse 11. It says, in Luke 16, verse 11, <clears throat> if therefore you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon. Now mammon is not, for the Philippines, this is called bread. This is bread in the Philippines. But mammon is simply means money. It, <laughs> Some say it's a Syrian god of money. Now, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Now, money is not the true riches. What is the true riches? Spiritual things. The things of God. It's knowing that God is great. It's having a, an, a, a, a contented heart. It's becoming more gracious. It's becoming more patient, right? Those are, those are the things that's hard to have. Many people doesn't like to pray for patience. Why? Because tribulation worketh patience. You want patience in your life? You must have first tribulation. So my pastor before, he said, I don't want to really pray about patience, you know. Because it, before that is tribulation. <laughs> but here, what is our focus? Now if you think of Starbucks. What's the focus of Starbucks? Coffee, yeah? Huh? How about Nike? How about us? What's the focus of HBC? I don't know. Many, many things. I hope that our focus is the things of God. It is seeking to expand the kingdom of God and His righteousness. That's why we go on soul winning. That's why we have Sunday school. That's why we have giving. I really like that QR code there, the online giving there. It's, there was one time in church in China, there was a guest. I would really like to give, but you know what? It's in my phone. The problem is we don't have a QR code for the church, and that gave me an idea. So let's pray for that. Anyway, seek God first in your focus. You know, if your focus is this world, you will not think about the things of God. There's Formula One coming in. Man, I wish I can stay to watch that one. And the world is, 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 can spend a lot of money just for four wheels going around some parts of Singapore. Millions. Why? Because their focus is something for this world. But how about us? What is our focus? I hope and pray that our focus is the things of God. Fourthly, let's go to verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. He cannot serve God in mammon. This is talking about loyalty. This is talking about fidelity. So seek God first in your 
fulfillment. Seek God first in your finances. Seek God first in your focus. Now, fourthly, seek God first in your fidelity or loyalty. No man can serve two masters. Now, I don't think this is true. You know what, brother? I work four jobs. This is not talking about jobs. This is talking about slavery. During those times, if you are a slave, you are owned by one master. You cannot serve two masters. Either you're serving your master or not. That's why every Christian, wherever you are, you're not serving your company. You're not serving your boss. You're serving God. Sometimes we put a distinction between secular and spiritual. But for a Christian, everything is spiritual. When we buy something on Lazada or Shopee, it's spiritual. Every spending decision is a spiritual decision. How many things in your house, you put the button, you put it in your cart, and you shopped it, and you bought it, and until now you have not yet opened it, or maybe you have opened it and you're not using it, because you think, why did I buy this? But if your loyalty is to the Lord, you will think twice. My wife would ask me, Dad, can I buy this? It's so nice. Oh, yes, you can. But I ask her this. Do you need it? And then later, you will realize, I don't think I need it. So she will not buy it, praise God. You know why? Because everything that we do is spiritual. Whatever your goal, why do you want to become an engineer? Why do you want to have a lot of money? What's the goal? So that you can be the richest man in Singapore? What? None. What's the goal why I'm doing this? The goal should be loyalty to our Lord. Lord, I'm doing this because I want to show that my life, you can, I can be accounted for, I can be responsible of what the things that you give me. Why? Because I do it for you. You serve God. You cannot serve God in mammon. And if you are here, you're a Christian. You are faithful in church every Sunday. But from Monday to Saturday, you don't read your Bible. You don't pray. You don't even share your faith. You spend too much time in social media. You spend too much time online. And you don't have time for the Lord. My friend, you are not loyal to the Lord Jesus Christ. I hope and pray that you change your lifestyle. And maybe ask yourself, am I truly saved? Because a true saved person will desire the things of God, will desire the word of God. But if you don't have that heart, you feel like you're, you're, you like the word more. Either you're a carnal Christian or you're not saved. So you better ask yourself, am I truly saved? Do I truly understand the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ? Because a lot of people today in churches, they think they are saved. Why? Because they're holding a King James Bible. A lot of people come to church and say they are saved. Why? Because my dad is a Christian. Even me, I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a very good home. I am, we were three, I'm the youngest. And I feel like among the two elder brothers that I have, best you know i'm the righteous one that's what i thought but then i realized in a bible study one night the rich man and lazarus Ra lazarus went to paradise and the, the rich man went to hell and my father asked us are you sure if you die you're going to heaven and for the first time at 10 years old yeah i'm not really sure that night i settled everything god save my soul forgive my soul forgive my sin and maybe you're here, you're a young people, you're someone, or maybe you're a member here for a long time. You ask yourself, if I die today, are you 100% sure that you're going to heaven? If you die today, are you 100% sure that you have a relationship with God? Because if you have a shadow of a doubt, I pray that you will make it and settle. Because you cannot serve God with a doubt in your heart. Oh, there was one time when my pastor's daughter we went to the same church. We went to Sunday school. We went and do ministry together. And then one day, she went back to the States and, and wrote the church. And she said, I was not truly saved. I just got saved here in school. Then I asked myself, am I really saved? Because, man, that was my partner in work of the Lord. 
So I made sure, again, Lord, for, to, just to make it sure, <laughs> you know that you're my Lord, you're my Savior. Seek God first in your fidelity. Now, lastly, seek God first in your faith. Verse 25 to 34. And look at verse 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. It means don't worry. And look in verse 31. Take, therefore take no thought, saying what shall we eat or what shall... Again, it says don't worry. And in verse 34, take therefore no thought for the morrow shall take of itself. So here he's talking to followers of Jesus Christ and don't worry. Do not. He is saying it. The people are already worrying. So he said in verse 25, stop worrying. And in verse 31, don't even start again to worry in your life. That's one of the sins that Baptist people always have. And it's a sin, my friend, to worry. We should live a life of trust in God. And why does the word of God say this? He gave us an illustration. Behold the fowls of the air. He compares us with what? With birds. A bird and a human being, which one is more important? Of course, it's a bird, right? No. Jesus Christ is pointing out that if I can take care of something insignificant, how much more can I not take care of you? That's why we don't need to worry. Why? Because look, because your heavenly Father, He is our heavenly Father. I have three children. All of them are angels. Not all the time. Sometimes I would want to throw them in the window. But I don't want to do that. Why? Because I'm a father. I love them. I would like the best for them. I discipline them by the grace of God. But, you know, I want the best. Now, I am an evil father. Meaning to say, I'm not perfect. But you know what? We have a heavenly father. Do you have a father right now? Maybe you have a father that's abusive, a father that's not perfect, a father that you don't talk to, but if you're a Christian today, you have a heavenly father that's perfect. And he says, I will take care of you. That's why we don't need to live a life of worry. That's why we need to seek God first. Lastly, in your faith. Where are you putting your faith? I hope and pray that you put it in our heavenly father. Let him be our confidence to face the future. That's why we sing that song. Because he lives, I can face tomorrow. <laughs> because Christ lives, all fear is gone. Our Sunday school today is simple. Seek God first. In your fulfillment, in your finances, in your focus, in your fidelity, last we all have faith, but what is the focus or the object of your faith? I hope and pray it's not the economy in Singapore. Your faith is in God. He is our Heavenly Father.